take place. Let's find it. Yeah. Okay. Good morning again. It's so much fun to uh, be sitting there and then get up and see new faces. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. And thank you, Facebook land. What a joy. Yeah, like I said, next week, coffee and bulletins. Yes. Ah, <laughs> oh, God is good all the time. So today I'm going to talk about the soul's call. So let's just breathe into that. The soul's call to me means discovering the importance of understanding life and understanding our divinity. The universe always has a plan, and this just happens to be the book study that I'm doing right now with Matt Kahn's uh, book, and that class that I'm teaching. And so I like this, this last time he had, Matt recalls being treated to ice cream as a reward as a child. And Matt uh, would go into the ice cream shop and he would uh, sample all the flavors until he found the absolute perfect combination. The important message that Matt is giving us here of the ice cream store philosophy is that Matt never felt bad or wrong about the flavors he disliked. Now let's think about that. He, he tested all those flavors. And yet, he didn't feel bad or feel that those flavors were mad at him because they didn't get picked. Not choosing the flavors didn't hurt the ice cream either. Choices are here for us. Choices so we can decide what we enjoy the most. That's why there's so many choices to this life. On our spiritual journey, we are given permission to sample many choices of life's experience. Anybody? Yeah. Because you see, this helps us to develop discernment. We each get to choose what is best for our soul in expression. I don't know about you, but I didn't grow up knowing that. And so I had to learn it. And this month's Science of Mind magazine is all about the soul's call and radical self-love. So here it is. Uh, I was, Reverend Suzanne and I were talking earlier. Uh, there's only about four of them back there. If you haven't gotten it, and you want to go deeper into knowing who you are, this is the one to get. So there's about four of them. It's really good. Radical self-love. Let's say anybody radically love themselves. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Ernest Holmes, our founder, says, through the power of love, we can let go of our past, our past history, and we can begin again. Love heals. Love forgives. Love makes whole. So radical self-love. Do we have a problem? Rex, no? Okay. Radical self-love is the healing balm, balm that will absolutely wash over us. How many of us radically love ourselves? Ah, good. We got one. Let's lean into it. Okay, we got a couple. Good. Notice who's raising their hands because we want to get to know them even better. Okay. How many of us believe that loving ourselves is our soul's call? You don't have to raise your hand. And that self-love is the most important part of our life's journey. I believe this is so. You've heard my story. Years ago, walking in the woods, I would walk in the woods daily, and I would question God. And I would doubt of my life. I would doubt the value of my life. And I'd go, this just isn't, this isn't real. This isn't good. I would argue with God. 
As I asked, I heard. If there is one question that you get to, you get to be asked as you finish this slide, if there is a question at all, I'm hearing spirits say. Instantly, I felt as if the universe was opening up and I was going to get the secret to life. I was so excited. Okay, if there's one question, I said, then what is it that would be asked of me? And Spirit said, the only question, if you were asked, would be, how much did you love yourself? I yelled out loud, no, that can't be. I don't know how to love myself. I was always the kind that was doing for others, fixing for others, making it right for others. Because you see, on the, on the dark side of who I was, I mean, I was out there doing all these th great things. Now, I thought that's what counted, but I counted all my mistakes. I counted my wrong turns in life. I counted my bad choices. I used my life experiences against myself. Anybody? I allowed those life experiences to define my unworthiness. We've all made mistakes. If we only post our mistakes in our trophy case to beat ourselves up with our mistakes, we're definitely missing it the main purpose of the adventure of this life, because that's what I did. I'd like to say I have grown beyond that. I'm still working on it. Self-love is a, as a constant because our soul's call is an adventure, a time of discovery, a time of deep self-love, self-acceptance, just as we are and just as we are not. I don't know about you, but I make mistakes every day. I'm learning to laugh about them. We make a difference because we are each of great value in this thing called life. Now, that's also one of Ernest Holmes' best book, This Thing Called Life. That was the book that I used to discover and learn to love myself. I have to admit that when I first started reading it, I would argue with that too. I argued so much with God, thank you God, that God loves me. And I'd take this book and I'd throw it across the room. That's not true, I'd say. Then I'd have to go pick it up and read it again. When we receive appreciation for our life expression with flowers or praise, we realize that somebody recognizes our value. However, it's up to each one of us to water the flowers the, and value the gift that we've been given. Anybody ever get flowers because somebody says thank you and you forget to water them? That's what we do when we say, oh no, that doesn't, that's okay. Thank you. I walked in, uh, Herb walked in this morning, he said, you look pretty today. I said, that's good, thank you. I didn't go and say, oh, you're wrong. I said, you're very right, thank you. I want to tell you another secret of what I did and what I learned to do to get past, because you see, when we're not loving ourselves, there's this area and we can't go any deeper than this because that's what we've learned. So when Rick came in my life and he said he loved me, I, I didn't really accept that. And he'd, he'd start making plans for the future and I'd say, well, if we're still together, you've heard this one too. And he'd say that to, after about the third time, he said that didn't feel good. So I realized I had to change something. And I, I had this block on accepting being loved. So when somebody says something nice, you. When somebody says, I love you, or thank you, or you're looking pretty today, you say, excuse me, what did you say? What? So they say it again, because they'll always say it again. And then when they say it again, you go take a deep breath, and you 
take it past this barrier, and I guarantee you it works. Every time Rick said, I love you, I appreciate you, you're beautiful, I, I think he thought in the beginning I was hard of hearing. And I'd say, what? Oh, excuse me? And he'd say it again, take a breath, take a beat. And, and I through that, because I said, I deserve that. I am receiving that. I am open to it. I open the door to know my value, to learn. Of course, then I made the mistake of telling him that that's what I was doing. And so now when he says, I love you, or you're really looking good, I say, what? He said, I don't know, I don't remember. <laughs> okay, we'll work on that one. Anyway, it's up to each one of us to take those praises, to take the appreciation, to take that essence deeper and value ourselves with respect and self-love and self-praise. I, that's where this whole thing comes is the best talk I've ever given. Because if I don't know that, if I don't believe that, if I don't open the door to that, then you're not going to receive it. But first, I have to. So let's ask ourselves if the choices we made were really wrong. As I'm getting older, I'm realizing that what if every decision was exactly perfect for me to be who I am today, for you to be who you are today. Let's breathe that in. There is no mistake in God. There is no mistake in our lives. Yes, we certainly learned from certain things, didn't we? I did. Won't do that again. Great, let's move on. This is the expression of our soul is to learn and to grow uniquely and individually as each one of us. Life is an adventure worth living just as we are. So it's up to each one of us to be proud, water our flowers of honoring ourselves. That's why I always congratulate myself first because I don't wait for somebody else to say that. For me to get to know it. Because you see, I'm hoping that what I do here, what I am here, is that something I say is opening the door for you, is lifting you, is finding that, that sweet and sacred divine nature within you. Because I know it, I see it. I see it in each and every one of you. It's up to each one of us to allow the good the self-love, the self, our divine nature to awaken within us in a greater way than ever before. Today, tomorrow it will be even greater. It's up to each one of us to open, to discover, to love, to live full out. Ernest Holmes said, all the good that you desire awaits your acceptance of it. However, you cannot experience it while you deny it. So if we say, somebody says, oh, that was really good what you did, and you say, oh, well, thank you, but no. We're really shutting the door on our own self-love. Water your flowers with your words, with your acceptance. Like I say, good and more good is mine. Everything always works out for me. Even when I'm in the midst of questioning, Yesterday, I'm sitting down, what am I talking about? Everything always works out for me. I keep repeating over and over again because I know that there's something that is awakening within me, that's awakening within you, that is desiring your highest and greatest good. Yes? Yes. Good. Everybody know that? Yes. Good. We are, we are each spiritual beings navigating our earthly experience. It's up to each one of us to see life from an expanded awareness of our soul. Being divine in nature, you are divine in nature. We are each the eternal soul in a body. We're not a body with hopefully an, an eternal soul. We are an eternal soul living in this body 
to express, to experience life in its myriad of choices. So let's choose. Let's taste all the flavors of life and decide which one feels the best, which one looks the best, which one tastes the best. Seek and ye shall find. At the center of our being is a sacred temple. Right where you are is a sacred temple. Alive within you. It's filled with life. It's filled with joy. It's filled with adventure. And it's filled with choices. In our temple lives unconditional love and eternal life. It is up to each one of us to discover that, though, because I can tell you about it. I can tell you that I see it. I know it for you. You got to know it. Just say, what did you say? Ah, the eternal temple of life lives within you. And breathe past that place. There's no wrong flavor of ice cream, just choices. Life is filled with choices that we get to call in and live and choose with no regrets. The best we can. What I've learned over the years is that this life becomes much easier with self-love, self-acceptance, self-respect, and self-honoring. Do I do that all the time? No. But I'm willing to keep working at it. Are you? Yes. Today I invite each one of us to claim our freedom and to love ourselves deeply. That's our soul's call. This, I believe, is the soul's call. And I'm going to close today with reading to you from um, the Signs of My Magazine. The really great... Oh, where'd he go? I lost him. Did I? Did I do it? Um, the person writing the dailies is Reverend David uh, Alt. He is an amazing minister. He had the Atlanta Church, which was a really big church. And, uh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to find where I wanted to read today. Ah, there it is. It's today's The Gallery of Thought. And this is what Reverend David says. Holmes, Ernest Holmes encouraged us to feel as though we are on a mission. A mission that glorifies the soul. We honor the soul each time we visit thoughts that take us beyond appearances. Thoughts painted with vibrant, infinite good. Thoughts that partner with our intuition, with our uniqueness, and that trust our renewable abilities to bring contributions to the world. Such a mission always leads us around the corners of different opinions, and there our hearts will meet new inspiration. So let's just take a moment and go into prayer and open our hearts to that new inspiration, that soul's call that from the day we were born has been calling our name. So if it's comfortable, just take a breath. Knowing and accepting that there's only one life, one power, one all-loving, all-nurturing presence by whatever name. I call this God, the infinite, the divine, the beloved. It is the very life, it is the temple of life that lives within and throughout each and every one of us. For we each are the beloved place where God shows up. This is what I know to be true. That right where you are, right where I am, there is a wellspring of love, a wellspring of order and harmony and balance and, and infinite wisdom. And we stop in this moment and we breathe into that, knowing and accepting that the light and the love and the glory of God moves throughout our body temple, healing, renewing, strengthening, refreshing each and every one of us. And we allow this love, this light of truth to go beyond our physical bodies and touch our friends, our families, our neighbors, and those that we love, and those that we might not be the flavor we care for. It's all good. It's all God. And so we allow ourselves from this very loving space to be lifted up to love all flavors. It doesn't mean we have to order it. It just means that all are part and parcel of God. 
But when we bring that back, that unity, that harmony back to our own divine self, knowing and accepting that our willingness to fall deeper in love with who we are as individualized expressions of the one life is that that is being called upon for each one of us today, every day. So I'm knowing and accepting that greater than how I'm speaking this word is already taking place in the mind of God, that there's a myriad of, ah, of answers, of renewal, of being refreshed, of opening the door to all possibilities that we are privileged to be a part of. Choices, choices and inspiration and greater clarity is love about us. And the mystery and the miracles are yet to be revealed. As I release this, my powerful word into that ever-living, loving law of God that always says yes. And it returns to and through each and every one of us, multiplied, magnified, spilling over. We are full of it. And we're proud of it. And we just let God do God's work. And if you're in agreement, please join me in saying, and so it is. Amen.